Chapter One, Introduction to My Journey. Hi, I'm Freya, and today I'm going to talk about my journey to London. When I went to London, I was an absolute beginner in English. I remember how excited I was to travel to such a famous city. But I had no idea how hard it would be to get around and talk to people in a language I didn't know well. Let me take you back to that time. Imagine standing in the middle of a busy airport, hearing people speak quickly in English, seeing signs everywhere, and not understanding most of it. I thought I would be okay. Because I had studied a little English before, but when I had to ask for directions, it was so hard to get the words out. My mind went blank, and I struggled to understand what people were saying. The beginning of my challenge. It wasn't just about understanding words. It was about understanding how people spoke them, fast, with different accents. I didn't know how to ask simple questions like, "Where is the bus stop?" or "How much does this cost?" It was frustrating, and it made me feel small. I thought, "How will I survive in London if I can't even ask for a cup of coffee?" But I didn't give up. I knew I had to find solutions to these problems. One of the first things I did was to carry a phrase book with me. It was helpful, but it wasn't enough. I needed to practice real conversations. Here's something I learned quickly: the only way to learn English is to speak it, even if you make mistakes. As the famous author J.K. Rowling once said, "It is impossible to live without failing at something, unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all." I realized that making mistakes was a part of learning, and it was okay. Learning by listening. Another thing that helped me was listening. I started listening to people around me, on the bus, in stores, and on the street. Even if I didn't understand everything, I began to pick up common words and phrases. Listening is such an important part of learning a language. If you want to speak well, you need to hear how words sound and how sentences are put together. One technique I found useful was shadowing. This means repeating what someone else is saying as soon as they say it. You can do this by listening to people in real life, or by watching TV shows in English. I found it really helped me with pronunciation and fluency. By copying how native speakers talked. I started to feel more confident. Facing my fears, but of course it wasn't always easy. I was scared of speaking because I didn't want to say the wrong thing. There were times when I froze, and the words just didn't come out. It felt like everyone was staring at me, waiting for me to speak. But then I remembered a quote by Nelson Mandela: "The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall." I knew that if I wanted to improve, I had to keep trying. Slowly, I learned to speak more, little by little. I started with simple sentences like. Can I have this, please? Or where is the train station? Even though I still made mistakes, people were kind and patient, and that gave me more courage. Techniques that helped me. 
So, how did I go from being afraid to speak English to feeling more comfortable? Here are a few techniques that worked for me. Practice daily conversations. Even if it's just asking for directions or ordering food, practice talking to people. Use language apps. Apps like Duolingo or Babbel helped me build my vocabulary and practice phrases on the go. Listen and repeat. As I mentioned before, listening to native speakers and repeating what they said helped me sound more natural. Speak slowly. At first, I tried to speak quickly, but I realized that speaking slowly and clearly made communication much easier. Find a language partner. I met some friendly people in London who helped me practice English. Having someone to talk to regularly made a huge difference. If you want to hear more about these techniques, I have uploaded videos on my channel that show how to improve your English speaking and listening skills. You can check them out anytime. What about you? Have you ever felt nervous speaking in English? How did you handle it? Share your experiences in the comments below. I'd love to hear your stories. Chapter 2 my first day in London. When I arrived in London, I was full of excitement. The idea of exploring a new city, one that I had only seen in movies, was thrilling. But soon, reality set in. It was my first day, and I realized that not knowing enough English was going to be a bigger challenge than I thought thought. I remember getting off the plane, looking around, and feeling lost. The airport was huge, people were rushing around, and everyone was speaking so fast. I had learned some English before, but hearing it spoken so quickly and in different accents made me feel like I didn't know anything at all. Struggling to communicate, the first challenge came when I needed to ask for directions to the hotel. I had the address written down, but I didn't know how to say it in a way that people would understand. I hesitated before approaching someone, feeling nervous. When I finally asked, excuse me, how do I get to this hotel? The person answered so fast that I didn't catch a single word. I felt frustrated and embarrassed. How was I going to get around if I couldn't even understand basic directions? But then I remembered something important. It's okay to ask people to repeat themselves. So I took a deep breath and politely said, Sorry, can you please say that again, but slower? The second time, I understood a little more. It wasn't perfect, but I was able to follow the directions and find my way. That small victory gave me a bit more confidence. Learning through mistakes. One thing I quickly realized is that learning English or any language is full of mistakes. But that's how we learn. I kept reminding myself that making mistakes was normal. As the famous writer Samuel Beckett said, ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. That first day, I made a lot of mistakes. I mispronounced words, used the wrong grammar, and sometimes people didn't understand me at all. But every time I learned something new. For example, when I asked for a ticket to the city, I pronounced it wrong. The person didn't understand at first, but after repeating it a couple of times, they got it. 
I learned that slowing down my speech and pronouncing each word clearly could make a big difference. Using simple techniques to improve. During that first day, I also started using some simple techniques to help me get better. One thing that worked was repeating key phrases in my head. For example, I would repeat, where is the, how much is this, and can I have, over and over. Repeating these phrases helped me remember them when I needed to speak. Another technique I used was listening carefully to native speakers. At the hotel, I listened to the receptionist as they spoke with other guests. I paid attention to how they said things and tried to copy their tone and rhythm in my head. Even though I couldn't understand everything, I focused on learning a few key phrases. One of the most helpful tools I discovered was Google Translate. When I didn't know a word or phrase, I used the app to translate what I wanted to say. It wasn't perfect, but it helped me communicate when I was stuck. Dealing with frustration. I won't lie. There were moments when I felt really frustrated. It's hard when you can't express yourself or understand others but I kept telling myself that this was part of the process. As Nelson Mandela once said, it always seems impossible until it's done. I knew that if I wanted to get better at English, I had to keep going, even when it felt difficult. I didn't let the frustration stop me. Instead, I used it as motivation to learn more and try harder. Listening and learning from others. Throughout the day, I met several people who were kind enough to help me, even though I didn't speak English very well. They spoke slowly and used simple words. From these interactions, I learned that people are usually patient and understanding if you show that you are trying. I also learned that it's important to ask for help when you need it. Asking someone to repeat themselves or explain something in simpler words was a huge help to me. Most people were happy to do it, and this made me feel less nervous about asking for help in the future. Techniques to help you speak and understand English. Better by the end of the day, I had learned a lot, not only about London, but also about how to handle speaking English in real situations. Here are some techniques that helped me. Repeat key phrases in your head to remember them when needed. Listen carefully to how native speakers say things, even if you don't understand every word. Don't be afraid to ask people to repeat themselves or speak more slowly. Use translation apps like Google Translate to help when you're stuck. Stay calm and don't rush when speaking. It's better to speak slowly and be understood than to rush and confuse people. I've also uploaded videos on my channel where you can practice these techniques with me. Check them out to improve your English speaking and listening skills. Have you ever had a day like this where you felt lost because you didn't speak the language? Share your story in the comments below. I'd love to hear how you handled it. Chapter three, facing challenges in public places. On my second day in London, I felt a bit more prepared. I had learned some valuable lessons on my first day, 
like asking people to speak slowly and using translation tools when needed. But even with that, I faced new challenges, especially in public places like restaurants and train stations. These were situations where I had to speak quickly and clearly, and sometimes the pressure made it even harder. At the restaurant, one of the most challenging moments was when I went to a small restaurant for lunch. I walked in, looked at the menu, and realized I didn't know how to pronounce many of the dishes. The names were unfamiliar, and I felt nervous. I wanted to ask for a simple sandwich, but even that seemed hard to say. When the waiter came to take my order, I panicked a little. I couldn't remember the word I wanted, so I just pointed at the menu and hoped for the best. Luckily, the waiter was kind and asked, Would you like a drink with that? At that moment, I froze. My mind went blank. I didn't know how to respond quickly enough. All I managed to say was, uh, yes, please. Handling embarrassment. That small interaction made me realize how important it is to practice speaking in real situations, not just in a classroom or with friends. Speaking English with native speakers in everyday settings was a whole new challenge. But I knew I couldn't let these moments stop me. I had to find ways to stay calm and confident, even when I made mistakes. One thing I started doing was preparing phrases in advance. Before going to a restaurant, I would practice saying things like, can I have this, please? I would like a glass of water. How much is this? By repeating these phrases in my mind, I felt more ready to speak when I needed to. Even if I wasn't perfect, just having something prepared helped a lot. A quote that kept me motivated was by Albert Einstein. A person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. Every time I made a mistake, I remembered this quote, and it gave me the confidence to keep going. At the train station, another difficult moment came when I had to buy a train ticket. London's train stations are busy, and everything moves fast. I needed to get a ticket to a specific station but I didn't know how to say the name of the station correctly. When I approached the ticket counter, I mumbled the station name and the person didn't understand me. I repeated it, but I still wasn't clear enough. I felt embarrassed again, but this time, instead of panicking, I stayed calm. I took a deep breath and said, can you please help me? I need a ticket to this station and pointed to the map. The person smiled and said, of course. That small moment made me realize that it's okay to ask for help. Most people are willing to help if you ask politely. From that day forward, I always reminded myself to slow down, speak clearly, and use gestures if needed. Communication isn't just about words. It's also about body language and showing what you mean with your hands or expressions. Techniques to overcome public speaking challenges. Facing challenges in public places made me think about how to improve my English even more. Here are some techniques that really helped me Practice key phrases in advance. Before going to a restaurant, shop, or train station, practice the things you might need to say. It will give you confidence when the moment comes. Use gestures. 
if you're unsure how to say something, don't be afraid to point or use hand gestures. This helps get your message across. Stay calm and breathe. It's easy to get nervous in public, but staying calm will help you think clearly. Take a deep breath before speaking. Prepare for common questions. In places like restaurants or stations, people often ask the same questions. Prepare for these by learning how to answer simple questions like, would you like a drink? Or where are you going? Handling fast conversations. One of the hardest parts of speaking English in public is how fast people talk. In busy places, conversations move quickly and it can be overwhelming. One technique I used was to focus on key words. For example, at the train station, instead of trying to understand every word, I listened for important words like ticket, train, or station. This helped me get the main idea of the conversation, even if I didn't understand everything. I also realized that it's okay to ask people to repeat themselves. If someone speaks too fast, you can always say, sorry, can you say that again, but more slowly? Most people will understand and repeat what they said more clearly. Improving my listening skills. Another thing I learned was that listening is just as important as speaking. I began to improve my listening skills by paying close attention to the way people talked in public. I would listen to their tone, their rhythm, and the way they pronounced words. Even when I wasn't talking, I was still learning by listening. To practice this, I started listening to English podcasts and shows at night. I'd recommend you do the same. Listening to English, even when you're not speaking, helps you become more familiar with the language. I've uploaded some helpful listening practice videos on my channel as well, so be sure to check them out. Have you ever felt nervous speaking English in a public place? How did you handle it? I'd love to hear your stories in the comments below. Chapter 4. Learning Through Everyday Conversations As my days in London went on, I began to realize something very important. The more I practiced English in real-life conversations, the easier it became. At first, speaking English felt like a huge mountain to climb, but as I continued to use it in everyday situations, my confidence grew little by little. In this chapter, I'll talk about how everyday conversations became my biggest tool for learning English. Starting small. When I first arrived in London, I was afraid of having conversations with strangers. I worried that I wouldn't understand them or that they wouldn't understand me. But as I mentioned in the previous chapter, I learned to stay calm and slow down. I also realized that I didn't need to speak perfectly. I just needed to communicate. I started with small conversations, like saying hello to the shopkeeper or asking, how much is this in a store? These small conversations may not seem like much, but they were important steps for me. Each time I spoke to someone, I felt a little more comfortable. A quote by Henry Ford always inspired me. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. This reminded me that the only thing holding me back was my own 
fear. If I believed I could speak English, I knew I could make progress. Learning by listening and repeating. One of the most helpful techniques I used was listening carefully and repeating what I heard. When I heard someone say a sentence, I would repeat it quietly to myself, trying to mimic their pronunciation and tone. This helped me sound more natural when I spoke. For example, when I heard someone at a cafe say, can I have a coffee, please? I would repeat it in my mind over and over. Later, when I went to order my own coffee, I knew exactly how to say it. This is called the shadowing technique, and it's a great way to improve your pronunciation. You can use it when watching English shows, listening to English podcasts, or even in real life situations like I did. I've also made a video about this technique on my channel, so be sure to check it out for more tips. Asking for help without fear. Another important lesson I learned was that it's okay to ask for help. In fact, most people appreciate it when you're honest about your language struggles. Instead of pretending I understood everything, I learned to ask simple questions like, can you repeat that? What does that word mean? Can you say it more slowly, please? This not only helped me understand the conversation better, but it also made the other person more patient with me. Asking questions showed that I was trying and people respected that. It's a simple technique, but it made a big difference in my learning process. Conversations with locals. One of the most exciting moments for me was when I had my first real conversation with a local Londoner. It happened when I was waiting for a bus. The person next to me asked, do you know when the next bus comes? At first, I panicked, but then I realized I understood the question. I answered, I think it comes in five minutes. The conversation didn't end there. The person asked me where I was from, and we started talking about my trip to London. I was nervous at first, but as we talked, I felt more comfortable. It was amazing to be able to hold a conversation in English. I wasn't perfect. I made some mistakes and used simple sentences, but that didn't matter. What mattered was that I was speaking and I was being understood. That's the most important thing when you're learning a language, communication, overcoming the fear of speaking. A lot of language learners are afraid to speak because they don't want to make mistakes. But here's something I learned. Making mistakes is part of the process. The more mistakes you make, the more you learn. Every time I said something wrong, I learned how to say it right the next time. As the famous inventor Thomas Edison said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. I kept this quote in my mind whenever I felt embarrassed or frustrated by my mistakes. It reminded me that every mistake was just a step toward improvement. One technique I used to overcome my fear was talking to myself. When I was alone in my room or walking down the street, I would practice speaking English to myself. I would describe what I was doing, what I saw, or what I wanted to say to someone. This gave me more confidence when it came time to speak with others. Practice makes perfect. As time went on, I noticed that my English was getting better. 
Not because I was studying harder, but because I was practicing more. Conversations in cafes, at the bus stop, or in stores became easier. I could understand more, and people could understand me better. Here are some techniques that helped me during this time. Shadowing. Listen to native speakers and repeat what they say, mimicking their pronunciation. Asking for help. Don't be afraid to ask for a repeat or for clarification. It's okay to ask. Small conversations. Start with small, simple interactions. The more you practice, the more confident you'll become. Talking to yourself. Practice speaking when you're alone. It helps you get used to forming sentences in English. Be patient with yourself. Language learning takes time. Celebrate the small victories and keep going. Have you ever tried the shadowing technique or had conversations with locals in a foreign language? How did it go for you? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your experiences. Chapter 5. Improving My Listening and Speaking Skills As I spent more time in London, I realized something very important. If you want to become better at speaking, you first need to become better at listening. Listening is the foundation of language learning. When you hear the language more often, your brain starts to understand how sentences are structured, how words are pronounced, and how conversations flow. At first, listening was difficult for me. Native English speakers talk fast, and they use words and expressions that aren't always in textbooks. But the more I listened, the more familiar everything became. In this chapter, I'll share how improving my listening skills helped me speak more confidently and how you can do the same. Listening everywhere. When I first arrived in London, I made an effort to listen to English everywhere I went. Whether it was on the bus, in a cafe, or on the street, I paid attention to the conversations around me. Even when I didn't understand every word, I focused on the sounds and rhythm of the language. At first, it felt overwhelming because people spoke so quickly, but then I started picking up common words and phrases. I noticed how people said, excuse me, thank you, or I'll have when ordering food. These small phrases became easier to recognize and soon I was able to use them myself in conversations. One thing that helped me a lot was watching English shows with subtitles. I would watch and listen at the same time, reading the words as they were spoken. This helped me connect the spoken words to their meanings. Over time, I became more comfortable with the speed of spoken English. The power of repetition. One technique that really helped was repetition. When I heard a new word or phrase, I would repeat it to myself several times. This helped me remember how it sounded and how it was used in a sentence. For example, when I heard someone say, can I get a coffee? I would repeat it quietly to myself over and over. This repetition helped me with pronunciation too. The more I repeated a word, the more natural it sounded when I said it out loud. This also helped me feel more confident when speaking to others. A quote that inspired me during this time was from Malcolm Gladwell. 
Practice isn't the thing you do once you're good. It's the thing you do that makes you good. I realized that by practicing my listening and speaking every day, I was slowly getting better. Learning new words through listening. Another great benefit of listening more is that you naturally start learning new words. Every time I heard a word I didn't know, I would try to guess its meaning from the context of the conversation. If I wasn't sure, I would look it up later. This way, I was expanding my vocabulary without even realizing it. One technique I used was to carry a small notebook with me. Whenever I heard a new word, I would write it down and look it up later. Then, I would practice using that word in sentences. This simple habit helped me learn a lot of new words in a short amount of time. If you don't have time to carry a notebook, you can also use your phone to note down new words. And remember, it's okay if you don't understand every word you hear. Focus on learning a few new words each day and your vocabulary will grow over time. Improving speaking through listening. Listening didn't just help me understand English better, it also helped me speak better. By listening to native speakers, I learned how to structure my sentences more naturally. I noticed the way people used common expressions and phrases, and I started using them myself. For example, I learned that people often say, that sounds good, when agreeing to something. I started using this phrase in my own conversations, and it made me sound more natural. The more I listened, the more I learned how to speak in a way that felt less like a textbook and more like real life. Listening also helped me with my intonation. Intonation is the rise and fall of your voice when speaking. In English, intonation can change the meaning of a sentence so it's important to get it right. By listening to native speakers, I learned when to raise my voice and when to lower it, making my speech sound more fluent. Using podcasts and videos to improve listening. One of the best ways to practice listening is by using podcasts and videos. When I wasn't out in public, I would listen to English podcasts at home. Podcasts are great because you can listen to them anywhere while walking, cooking, or even cleaning. They helped me get used to the flow of the language and improved my understanding of everyday conversations. I also watched English videos on YouTube especially videos that focused on language learning. These videos not only helped me improve my listening, but they also taught me valuable tips for learning English. In fact, I've uploaded some helpful videos on my own YouTube channel to help with listening and speaking practice. So feel free to check them out. Techniques that helped me improve my listening here are some techniques that really helped me improve my listening skills. Listen to English every day. The more you listen, the more familiar the language becomes. You don't need to understand every word. Just focus on getting the general meaning. Use subtitles. Watching shows with subtitles helps you connect the spoken words with their meanings. Repeat what you hear. When you hear a new word or phrase, 
Repeat it several times to yourself. This helps you remember it and practice pronunciation. Guess the meaning from context. When you hear a new word, try to guess its meaning from the conversation around it. This will help you learn naturally. Use podcasts and videos. Podcasts and videos are great tools for improving your listening. You can listen to them anytime, anywhere, and they help you get used to the rhythm of English. What's your favorite way to practice listening? Do you prefer podcasts, shows, or talking to people? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your tips. Chapter 6, Reflection and Final Tips. As I look back on my journey from being an absolute beginner in English to where I am today, I can't help but feel proud of the progress I've made. When I first arrived in London, speaking and understanding English felt almost impossible. I was nervous, scared of making mistakes, and unsure of myself. But through small steps, daily practice, and a lot of patience, I've come a long way. In this final chapter, I want to reflect on my journey and share some important lessons and tips that I learned along the way. I hope these tips will inspire and help you as you continue on your own journey to learn English. Overcoming fear. The first and biggest challenge I had to face was fear. Fear of making mistakes, fear of being misunderstood, and fear of speaking English in front of others. But one thing I learned is that fear only holds you back. If you let fear stop you from speaking, you'll never improve. The key is to accept that making mistakes is part of the process. As the famous author Paulo Coelho said, the fear of suffering is worse than the suffering itself. Once I realized that making mistakes wasn't a big deal, I felt much more comfortable speaking English. I learned that people are generally kind and patient, especially when they see that you're trying to learn their language. Celebrate small wins. Another important lesson I learned was to celebrate the small victories. Language learning is a long journey, and sometimes it's easy to feel discouraged when you don't see big improvements right away. But every time you successfully ask for directions, order food, or hold a short conversation, it's a win. When I first started, I couldn't understand most conversations around me. But after a few weeks, I realized I could catch certain words and phrases. These small wins kept me motivated and reminded me that I was making progress, even if it was slow. One technique that helped me was keeping a language journal. Every day, I would write down a few things I learned or new words I heard. Looking back at that journal after a few weeks, I could see how much I had improved, and that gave me a huge confidence boost. Consistency is key. If there's one thing I've learned from this journey, it's that consistency is the most important factor in learning a language. You don't need to spend hours studying English every day. Even practicing for 10 to 15 minutes each day can make a big difference over time. I made it a habit to practice speaking and listening every day, whether it was by having small conversations, listening to podcasts, 
or repeating phrases to myself. By doing this consistently, I slowly built up my confidence and skills. A quote that really kept me going was by Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. The more you practice, the more natural speaking English will become. Techniques that worked for me. Throughout my journey, I found several techniques that really helped me improve my English, and I want to share them with you. Shadowing. This technique involves listening to someone speak English and repeating what they say. It helps with pronunciation, fluency, and listening skills. I've uploaded a video on shadowing on my channel, so check it out. Daily conversations. No matter how small, try to have a conversation in English every day. Whether it's asking for directions or chatting with a friend, daily practice is essential. Listening to English podcasts. Podcasts are great because you can listen to them while doing other activities. It helps you get used to the rhythm of the language and improve your understanding. Watching TV shows with subtitles. Watching shows in English with subtitles helps you connect spoken words with their meanings. It's a fun way to improve your listening and vocabulary. Writing in English. Writing helps you think in English and improves your grammar. Even writing short sentences or keeping a journal can make a big difference. If you want to practice these techniques more, I have uploaded several videos on my channel that focus on improving your speaking, listening, and writing skills. Feel free to watch them and practice along with me. Staying motivated. One of the hardest parts of learning a language is staying motivated. There will be days when you feel stuck or frustrated, and that's okay. The important thing is to keep going and remind yourself why you started. Learning a language takes time, but every step forward brings you closer to your goal. A great way to stay motivated is to set small, achievable goals. For example, you could aim to learn five new words every day or have one small conversation in English. Achieving these goals will give you a sense of progress and keep you motivated to continue. Remember the words of Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done. No matter how hard it feels right now, if you keep practicing, you will improve. Looking back and moving forward. As I reflect on my journey, I'm proud of how far I've come. I went from being an absolute beginner, struggling to ask for directions, to being able to hold conversations, listen to podcasts, and even create this podcast to help others learn English. It wasn't always easy, but it was worth it. Now, it's your turn. Whether you're just starting out or you've been learning English for a while, remember that progress comes with time and practice. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and don't give up when things get tough. You have the ability to succeed, just like I did. Final tips for success. Before I end this podcast, I want to leave you with a few final tips. Be patient with yourself. Language learning takes time. Don't expect to be perfect right away. Practice every day. 
Even if it's just for a few minutes, practice every day. Consistency is key. Don't be afraid to speak. The only way to get better at speaking is by speaking. Don't worry about making mistakes. Just try. Find what works for you. Everyone learns differently. Find the techniques that work best for you and stick with them. Have fun. Learning a language should be enjoyable. Try to make it fun by watching shows, listening to music, or having conversations about topics you love. What's the biggest challenge you faced while learning English? How do you stay motivated? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope my story and tips have inspired you to keep learning and improving your English. Remember, you can always check out the videos on my channel to help with your listening, speaking, and overall English skills. Keep practicing, stay motivated, and I'll see you next time.